here to work on his skill. That's how the Buddha avoided a lot of issues that would pull you off into wrong view, no matter which side you took. There are a lot of questions that he wouldn't answer. Is the world a oneness? Well, no. Is it a multiplicity? Well, no. Is there a self? Is there no self? He wouldn't answer that one either. Because as you saw, there are a lot of issues there where you make assumptions about what lies behind your experience. And those assumptions then will pull you away from actually solving the problem of suffering. Because after all, the problem of suffering comes from what? It comes from your actions. So you want to focus on your actions. This is the insight he gained on his, the night of his awakening. In his first knowledge, he saw that he had been reborn many, many times. And the question was, is there a pattern behind that? One thing he did see was that in the course of rebirth, you take on many different identities, which indicated that one of the beliefs that was around at the time was not true, that what you are in this time is what you're going to be in the next time around. Your identity is not fixed. But what does determine things? So in the second knowledge, he looked into the question of how beings all over the universe die and pass away, come back to rebirth. And he saw that it was through action. So the question of who he was got put aside. Who was doing the action, who was receiving the action, that got put aside. He focused solely on the action in and of itself. That was what was distinctive about it what he did with this knowledge. Because other people before him had seen beings dying and being reborn. They had come to a lot of wrong conclusions, and the big issue for them was, well, what is it in you that takes rebirth? What is there of any essence inside you that goes from one life to the next to the next? But the Buddha's reasoning was, if it's action that's causing things to happen. Focus on the actions and not on the who or the what. That was how he was able to come into the present moment, look at the present moment in terms of his actions, and just see it in terms of stress and the cause of stress, what you could do to put an end to it. Now, there's, in other words, questions of becoming in terms of identities and worlds of experience. Those got put to the side and focused on what he was doing. In one of his later talks, he expanded on this. He says, if you think about the past, and the question is, what, what, what was it? Did I exist? Did I not exist? If I did exist, what was I? How was I? He said, That's, those are questions of inappropriate attention. Similarly with questions of the future. Will I exist? Will I not exist? What will I be? And a lot of people notice. They raise the question, wasn't well, that what the belief in karma and rebirth is all about? Well, that's what the re one way of looking at rebirth. But it's not the way the Buddha recommended it. For the Buddha issues of Rebirth had to do more with the process by which it happened, not who you were or what you were or what takes rebirth. The process comes through actions. And that was what he brought into the present moment. Here again, he said in the present moment, questions of do I exist, do I not exist, do I have a self, do I not have a self? Those get in the way. You focus simply on what's happening, what you're doing, what your intentions are, 
there are steps by which you do give rise to a sense of who you are and the world you're in. But keep it at the processes. Keep it at what you're doing. Focused on the issue of where is the stress, what's the cause, and how you can put it into the, the cause. As for those other issues, you put them all aside. So in that sutta, he's basically giving a picture of how he thought on the night of his awakening. The options that were available to him. He could have thought about questions of who am I, where am I going, what will I be in the future. But that would have not led to a release. Release comes from looking at your actions as actions, part of a pattern of cause and effect. That's how you get the best Dharma lesson out of the knowledge that you gain while you meditate. I had a student one time who was quite psychic, but she got all these visions about what the meaning of the world was, what the meaning of life was, and kept having to tell her, those are not the issues. The issues are, what are you doing right now? In particular, what are you doing in the mind right now? Because that's where all the problems come from. Fortunately, the solution lies right here, too. As you see what's giving rise to stress, you say, it's not necessary. Let it go. Let it go. And you get more and more precise, more and more refined in your sensitivity to what's happening. So as you're here looking at the breath, you're looking at the right spot. Some people will say, looking at the breath, what about all these other big issues out there? What your true identity, the ground of being, your true self? You have to keep remembering, the Buddha said, those are non-issues. The real issue is being right here. What are you doing right now? Because what you're doing right now is setting things in motion that can lead to more suffering if you're not careful. Whereas if you focus on this issue of suffering or stress, then it cuts through a lot of those other big issues, the big abstractions, that will pull you away. So a large part of the practice is learning how to ask the right questions and pay attention at the right spot. Frame the issues in the right way. This is why the Buddha taught the Four Noble Truths. That's the framework. Because in that framework there's no mention of who's suffering or where they're suffering, where in the world they're suffering. He's pointing at something that's immediately present right here, right now. And it's simply up to us not to slip off from right here, right now, which we do so easily. Because the mind does like to think in terms of worlds in which you can find things that you want and things that you have the ability to find. In other words, you take on becoming around your desires. And all the narratives that go with that, worldviews that go with that, and they just tie you down. Whereas if you look at the choices you're making right now, there's a possibility of liberation. So try to stay focused right here. This is where the meditation becomes a balancing act, as with any craft or any skill. You try to get the mind quiet right here so it can see things, but at the same time alert. All too often when it gets quiet, it starts getting heedless, and it's used to falling asleep when it's quiet, so it begins to drift off and loses focus. But of course, if you're too tense, you start getting restless. You've got to find the right balance. And one of the ways of doing that is to take a lot of interest in the breath, what the breath energy can do in the body. Because the more clearly you see the breath, 
the more refined your sensitivity to the breath, then the more refined your sensitivity to what's going on in the mind will be as well. It's like listening to a piece of music far away. You have to make yourself very quiet to hear it. Very sensitive. As John Fuhrman once said, if we could get into nirvana simply through the power of our desire, we all would have been gotten there a long time ago. The path requires refinement. That you're very careful about how you look at things. You're very careful how you listen to things. Try to notice the little things going on in your mind right now. Because after all, the, who you are is something you can't see. But what you're doing is something you can potentially can see. So don't let the abstractions get in the way. Make sure you're asking the right questions, focusing on what you're doing, the craft of what you're doing right now, and seeing it as a craft is one way of making you more interested in what you're doing. We're not just plopping down and accepting whatever comes up. There's a skill in staying properly focused. So as you work on that skill, you find that a lot of things get uncovered. The type of knowledge that really is useful. <laughs>